Okay. We want to know we want to think a little bit harder about when does a function so when and where for which x values does a function have a derivative and when not we've seen that if we graph a function like x squared just a perfectly nice function if we look at the graph of that it looks like a nice smooth curve and when we zoom in on that thing when we zoom in on that guy let's say let's look at this um, really near 1 let's say from 0.95 to 1.05 we zoom in on it and it looks like a straight line and the question is is that always going to happen well no and um, very simple example is that if we look at absolute value of x and we graph that that's pretty much everybody's favorite example to look at if you zoom in on any point here or here it's certainly going to be straight line because it already is a straight line but if you zoom in here what's going to happen let's zoom in near so like say minus 0 0.1 to 0 0.1 wait a minute nothing happened oh wait I did zoom in it's just it looks exactly the same I've still got a sharp corner this guy changes from being negative slope to positive slope infinitely fast at with just there's there's zero width of change going from negative slope to positive slope and so that's gonna mean that there's something very nasty right here we're not gonna be able to say there's a definite tangent line here some people wanna say oh it's both negative and positive that's not really true there isn't a line that just kind of nicely is tangent to this and there's one there's no one direction the curve is going here you can talk about derivatives from the left and derivatives from the right kind of like left and right limits um, but there's no actual derivative there okay so that's one example so one thing that can go wrong is a sharp corner okay there's a special kind of corner which actually has even a special name let me demonstrate that let's look at um, uh, let's see how do I want to write it let's look at x to the two-thirds power and I'm not sure if it's gonna plot it nicely let's see Ooh, it doesn't like negative values for this let me let me try again actually this one's a little tricky with fractional powers let's look at um, I'm gonna call it the cube root of x squared it's really the same thing but I want to make sure that the computer does the square first. Aha. Because I did the square first, it understands that it really can do this for negative numbers. It was not sure if it could do it for negative numbers before. It's a common thing. Now what's happening? It's coming in, and it looks like it's getting steeper and steeper, and then bounces off. Now it looks a lot like the absolute value at first. It looks like, oh yeah, it's just got a kind of a sharp corner with a certain well-defined angle there. But let's zoom in. It's always all about zooming in let's zoom in to minus 0. Point, let's say 0.05 a little tighter than we did before so keep an eye on this angle here okay well let's see oh it's not actually very obvious yet we've zoomed in I claim the angles getting a little steeper um, let's go ahead and make sure that we use equal scaling aha now we see a little better that angle is actually getting steeper and then you might be thinking, well, I didn't use equal scaling on the first one. Let's actually zoom in one more time. Let's say minus 0.005 to 0.005. Keep an eye on this, what appears to be that opening angle. And I want to make sure I'm still using equal scaling. Okay. Aha, it's getting even tighter. As we zoom in, what we discover is that, in fact, this line, I claim this guy's getting infinitely steep right at that point. It's going to vertical and then suddenly it's turning around exactly 180 degrees and coming out this guy is essentially a, or the the sharpest curve imaginable on a on the graph of a function it's a 180 degree turn let me put that in math mode 180 degree turn and it's got a special name it's called a cusp that's such an incredibly tight corner. And it's this wasn't the hardest function to create. Cube root of x squared is not the weirdest thing you've ever seen, I hope. Um, and it creates a point where there's some really nasty stuff going on. Okay. So 
that is going to be another type of thing. It's essentially kind of a sharp corner phenomenon, but it's an extremely sharp corner, and it's called a cusp. And it very often happens, um, it most often happens with fractional powers. Okay, let's let's try and get the computer to uh, to graph the derivative of this. If y equals, I'm going to put it back in fractional exponent form. We actually know what the derivative should be. It seems like, oh, this should have a derivative. What's wrong with it? It's going to be 2 thirds x to the minus 1 third. Okay, let's have the computer plot that and see what happens. Uh, well, once again, it doesn't like that. Let me talk, let me redo it as one. It's it's suspicious of these uh, fractional powers. I think it should do this for all. Um, yeah, there we go. Okay, I'll delete this puppy. Okay, here's what's going on. It's got. Let's let's try and view these things together. Let me make it a little smaller um, so I can put them together. With this magnification, it's a little tricky. I'll make this smaller. Okay. So remember, the idea was that I've got this very steep downhill and then suddenly steep uphill. That's recorded by these negative values, and suddenly they blow up to minus infinity. Then the calculator is not understanding that it shouldn't connect those dots. And then it's suddenly plus infinity. That's vertical asymptote. And that makes sense. 1 over a, that's going to blow up at 0. When I have a 1 over something involving x, whenever the bottom is 0, namely when cube root x is 0 or x is 0, then this is going to blow up. And so what we see is fractional exponents can easily turn into negative exponents, and that's creating this behavior. So there's just nothing good going on with the derivative here at this point. Okay. Now, let me say something, though. There is something in which, there's some respect in which th these functions actually are kind of nice, though. The absolute value of x is still a continuous function. I didn't have to actually lift my pen to draw the function itself. I didn't make, have to make a sharp turn, but it is continuous. Okay. So I'm going to put here with the sharp corner, it's still continuous. Okay. Even though it's not differentiable. Here, um, this guy was still continuous. I didn't have to lift my pen. You can prove it as continuous if we know how to prove it, which we don't. Okay. And so this cusp, it's still continuous. Okay. So these guys aren't incredibly bad. Let me give you one more example. Um, let's just do the cube root of x, period. Instead of like square of the cube root, cube root of the square or whatever. This guy. Uh, that's just wrong. What did it do? Keep root x. Oh, that's just weird. It's getting very confused. Um, x to the one third, maybe? This is very interesting. I'm sure you don't really care. Uh, okay. Let me just try and do this. Um... No, it doesn't like that for negative values. It is not very smart about this. And I should have checked beforehand, but this is not something that this this fancy a computer program should be messing up on. Definitely. There we go. I don't know why it did that once. Okay, cube root of x looks like this. This guy doesn't have a sharp corner, but it does do something very disturbing in terms of the slope of the tangent line. There's always a tangent line to this function, but right at the origin, that tangent's getting vertical. And remember, the derivative is about measuring the slope of the tangent line as a number. So that's not going to be very nice. That's another place where we're going to get non-differentiability. So this is another species of non-differentiability. Anytime you have a vertical tangent, cusp or not, that's going to be the derivative will blow up. It will blow up to infinity, and we'll not get a derivative right at that point. Okay, But... Notice this example is still continuous. So they pass the sort of first test of continuity, but they don't pass the stricter test of differentiability. So differentiability, that's having a derivative. So to take the derivative of something means to differentiate, because it's all about that difference quotient. So these are close to close synonyms, but they, they're kind of different parts of speech, obviously. That is a stricter test than continuity. And one way to say that more precisely is that if a function 
is not continuous, then I claim it's not, can't possibly differentiable, be differentiable. Um, and let's say add a point. Let's say uh, A, then it is not differentiable there. But let me do an example. We had a, an example once like this. This was a function that we discovered had a very funky behavior. It was a step function. It started out minus 1 and then suddenly jumped to plus 1. Does it make sense to have a tangent line here? No way. I mean, the function doesn't even connect with itself here. There's no way we could put a, a nice tangent line and say, oh yeah, the function looks like a straight line here. No matter how much we zoom in, in terms of the zoom in procedure, no matter how much we zoom in in x, it's never going to look like a straight line. It's always going to look like a huge jump. And that's true for any kind of discontinuity. Any kind of discontinuity will never look like a straight line, no matter how much we zoom in. Okay, So if it's not continuous, don't even worry about whether it's differentiable. Now, there's a logical corollary to this. If somebody tells you a function is differentiable, they don't have to say, oh, and by the way, it's continuous as well. It had to be continuous. There's no way it could have this kind of horrible behavior and be so nice as to have a derivative. So differentiability implies continuity. That's how you often see it stated. Um, it's more useful in this form, usually. If it's not continuous, then you just you already know. Don't I don't have to worry about whether it has a derivative here. It's not going to work. Okay, that's about it.